Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark. This is Jesus cures a blind man at Bethsaida. This is Mark chapter 8, uh, 20 through through 26. They came to Bethsaida. Uh, some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, can you see anything? And the man uh, looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go back into the village. Here ends the lesson. Join with me for a moment of reflection and centering. Take a breath of this new day and make it part of you. Take a breath. Take a breath of this new day and make it part of you. Take a breath of this new day and make it part of you. In the name and the spirit of all that's most beautiful and sacred in life. Amen. Well, officially, this Wednesday, we start that wonderful journey of one of the two most important times in the church life, Easter and the second being Christ, uh, Christmas. And we know that throughout the world, there will be other traditions in their own particular ways celebrating the two events that we will be honoring and lifting up and reflecting on, and that's going to be death and life. So today, what I'm going to want to do is set an intention for us this morning of holding the possibility of creating a frame that would give us a foundation and a structure to begin exploring the possibilities of new creation. A place of looking at not so much just what has been, but what can become. One of the things that I have been very appreciative and I've heard from some of you that we've, it's been really great each week through a around the church in our church newsletter, Reverend Don is putting together some video reflections while on the trail. And we got one this week, right? From snowy, sunny, Conifer, Washington. I know. <laughs> and I was going to say, because of that, it was... Uh, Part of what that is, is that it's like on almost a Rocky Mountain High for me. And um, having had a number of experiences in that part of the country, especially around where I used to take high school and college kids, backpacking up in the mountains above uh, what was called Frisco and around Copper Mountain. And so, um, very special place. In that, Don lifted up for us some things that we might want to hold in our thoughts, one of which, which is what we're all facing right now, is that out of his acknowledgement and his sadness and grief, which we all are sharing, is in the news of Colin's choice to make a transition, a chance at this point of his departure, another of the changes that we're having to adjust ourselves to, but in that, that bittersweet decision that I want to honor and support Colin in the integrity and trustworthiness of his own inner voice and leading him at this point to say goodbye to this part of his personal, professional, and his own spiritual journey. And so um, we know that there's birth and death and rebirth 
which is the season of which we will be celebrating. But Colin and I would like to share with you now a way to be able to emphasize that point just a little bit mo more, both in music and in word, the fact that everything must change. Everything must change. Nothing stays the same. Everyone will change. No one stays the same. The young become the old, and mysteries, they unfold. Because that's the way of time. Nothing and no one goes unchanged. There are not many things in life that you could be sure of. Except rain comes from the clouds. Sun lights up the sky. And hummingbirds fly. Winter turns to spring. A wounded heart will heal, but never, never too soon. Yes, everything, everything must change. The young become the old. And mysteries do unfold. Because that's the way of time. There are not many things not many things in life you could be sure of, except rain comes from the clouds, sunlight lights up the sky, and hummingbirds fly. Rain comes from the clouds. Sunlight lights up the sky. And those little hummingbirds, they do fly. And music always makes me cry. Colin, it just came to me just now, and I just so appreciate being able to have had the opportunity to work with you and to have this special occasion today. 
and the words of E.E. E. Cummings comes to me. To be nobody else but yourself in a world which is doing its best night and day to make you everybody else is to fight the hardest battle we'll ever fight and never stop fighting. Or as Oscar Wilde put it, just be yourself, everybody else is taken. <laughs> Last week in Amy's children's story, she was talking about butterflies and cocoons and chrysalis and the challenge and the struggle and the importance of that those processes in order for change and transformation and new life to take place. Wonderful metaphor for spring for us at any time of our journey, actually. And when I heard her telling that story, it reminded me of the story I heard some time ago that there were two caterpillars. They were going along, they're on a branch together, and they looked up and they see this butterfly flying up over the top of them. And one of them says, boy, you'd never catch me up in one of those things. <laughs> well, I wonder if in caterpillar language, they may might have heard, O ye of little faith. Part of where we're at is in terms of what it is that we are to have faith and trust in. In what are we to have faith and trust in? And so today I would like to be able to explore some of those particular pieces that might assist us in our journey. When we were younger, for most of us, a lot of us used to love to be able to go out and sunbathe, just to sit out and enjoy this wonderful sun. That's something that we can't do and don't do, and wisely so now. But one of the things I want to suggest to you that we can do at any age and has wonderful benefits, and that's to learn to God bathe. And we don't have to worry about having to protect ourselves from God burns. Learning just to bask in the ocean of God's love and grace. To feel the wonderful presence of this divine supportive universe. Within us and without us is a wonderful thing. To become fascinated and intrigued with what is in store for us if we choose to develop a real passion for possibilities as opposed to hanging on and trying to keep recreating from what we have already known out of the memories of our past. But the risk and with standing on tiptoes to see what's coming next, everything must change. We know that. So why not join today in saying, let's be co-creators with each other and God and changing the direction of where we're going to be at cause rather than sitting around and waiting to be the effect of somebody else who made that choice for us. We get to be either at cause or effect. And we get to set that up and that's part of what we need to be doing each day, each moment, is to intentionally set the condition for living and living in the future of what God is calling us to become now, not just hanging on to what we're secure and safe with what has been. Big challenge. Because change, it, we know it's here, don't like it a lot, lot of times, but we know, as Don said in his reflection, the one absolute constant that we deal with all the time is change. For right now, for just a moment, I want you to take a deep breath. Take a big breath, hold it, hold it. Wait a minute, I saw some of you let go and you start breathing again. Of course you did. Why? 
you want to live longer than just this service. And if you didn't change your ways, and literally, we have to give and receive, take in and let go. It's a rhythm. It's a heartbeat. That's what we're needing to, and experiencing. How many of you are familiar with what is known as the Heart Math Institute? Anybody? I want to suggest that you familiarize yourself with who they are. They are grouped down in um, the Santa Cruz Mountains. They've been in existence for over 30 years. And they have been spending most of their research is in terms of the power and the meaning of the heart. And if you go on to heart math, M-A-T, it's like the math of the heart, dot org, they will give you an enormous number of resources that you can access and use uh, to help you to stay in touch with your heart. Most of the time, we think when we meditate, oh, I'm in a really deep meditative place, or I'm really, con but most of the time we're in our head thinking about what it's going to be like to be in our heart. What they have done and shown is that the heart is far more powerful than just an organ, as important as it is, of pumping blood throughout our whole system. And they have found that the heart has an enormous mind of its own. Within our biblical traditions, we talk about, and we've heard, I will take the heart of stone away from you and I will give you a heart of flesh. Or we've heard, take all things to heart. Or where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We have had it for thousands of years. We didn't say where your mind is, where your head is, although that's where we hang out most of the time. They said, where your heart is. You are to love God with your whole heart, mind, body, and soul. Primary place of our love and devotion. It's not the same, but it comes from that same place as to love our neighbors as ourselves. But our first devotion needs to be our alignment, our commitment, and our devotion to that which is the source of all creation of new possibilities. Behold, anyone who is in Christ, the old has passed and the new has come. At the Hartman Institute, one of the things that they've discovered is uh, both the heart and the mind both create an electrical, uh, electrical field as well as an electromagnetic field. And um, when, we, when, when you go to the doctor and they want to do a uh, check for a, uh, you know, brain waves, what do they use in the hospital? When we start doing in terms of, you know, electroencephalograms, right? EEGs. When they want to check in terms of your heart, what do they use to test in terms of your heartbeat? What do they use when they want to check the electromagnetic field within your body? Well, they'd use a, they use magnetometers, or they will also use, uh, if I can even pronounce the, the thing, it's called uh, magnetoencephalography, or MEG, and what that does is measure the electromagnetic field, just like the electromagnetic field that's around our universe. And they had, when 9-11 took place, they had already had two sensors in the northern and the southern hemisphere. And they were recording every 30 minutes the electromagnetic vibes around the Earth. Here's what's interesting, is that during 9-11, they were able to record 
incredible spikes at exactly the time of what happened on 9-11, and it showed up in terms of our response and how we affected that magnetic field on the earth in terms of people's response. They picked up. Now, here's another thing that is absolutely extraordinary, at least for me. They discovered with those particular technologies, the heart is a hundred times more powerful than the brain in terms of electro, uh, electric uh, power and energy, in terms of the electromagnetic energy. It's 5,000 times more powerful than the brain. Here's why that's important, because all day long, all of us have this conversation going on between our head and our heart. That's why some have said the longest journey we'll ever take will be the 18 inches from the head to our heart. We have gotten so away from being heart-centered, heart-focused, that we basically are just running on automatic pilot most of the time. They call that being in a trance and we are outside of being able to be in touch with the heart of who we are. One of the things that they've also been able to do to help us and is that um, they've got technologies to be able to help you to be able to record and be in touch with your heart rhythms and how to be able to stay Centered. What you and I are re dealing with right now in terms of brainwave patterns, we're dealing with what's called beta. If you drop down into a more meditative state, that's alpha brainwave patterns. You drop down even more when you go into a place that's like of hypnosis, that's theta. And for that deep REM sleep at night, that's called delta. Most of the stuff in terms of being able to access that kind of place of connection with well, the possibilities that are out there is to quiet our minds enough to be able to hear and to receive the messages of the universe beyond just what's being recorded. Devin has a device. I'm going to ask her to pull that out for me so that I can get that. I just want to show you a couple of things just to be able to, this is called, from that particular group, small little device that you could keep. And all you have to do is just collect this to your ear, put your finger on here like I just did, and it will tell me whether or not I am in this particular meditative, prayerful state rather than just being in my head. I say this because we need to find a way to get back to our heart. Right now, for those, if we had the, the magnetometers in here, they would be able to measure that Don and my heart, magnetic energies, are absolutely in conversation right now. That's, that will go out anywhere from three to four meters from where we're at. That could be measured. So can our thoughts. So you need to be mindful of our, we need to be mindful of our thoughts, as well as the things that we take to heart, because it affects everybody. We have a part in terms of how we are going to create the world that we want. If we live in fear, anger, hate, that's what gets communicated. You don't have to say a word. That gets radiated. So, to me, the universe is God's body. That's where we come, you know, and at that same point, we get to decide what we want to do in terms of the energy we put out or the energies we put in or we take in. Our Easter journey will help us to realize that it's about learning to be a part of what can be as co-creators of what's to come. And I want to suggest when we start on Ash Wednesday this week on our journey, that we take on at least to consider the willingness to learn how to die. 
The reason being is that we need to learn how to die to what is no longer present time. We need to learn to die to those things that we've outgrown. We need to learn to die to those things that have given us support and security in order for us to find a place of new life. That's what the Easter story is telling us. For resurrection and transformation, some things we have to let go of and we've got to die to in order for God to come in and transform us into new creations. We can't wait for someone outside of us to do that. As important as Easter is for us and the life of the church, I think it's also equally important for us to continue to keep listening to what God is doing and saying now. What language do we use? How do we know what God is saying now? Is it only the language of what we heard before? Don in his reflection said if we don't learn to change and embrace the change, we could also follow other sisters and brothers, not only of our denomination, but of other congregations around the world and their decline and their demise. But everything is changing. We've got dysfunctional governments all around the world and the values that we've been using to try to support them are no longer working. We've got economic systems. We've got also mindsets of what it's doing to our, our, our climate. The old ways are not working. Last week we heard Don shout to us something we hadn't heard in a long time. Repent! Turn around! What you're doing is not working. I have to tell you, it really kind of set me off for a minute because it really hooked my old Baptist background. And I thought, my goodness, are we in another revival here, Don? But that word has power and meaning. We need to let go of what we have been doing and get back to the heart of what we're about. One thing I'd like for you to do just real quickly. If you take a look at any of the pictures of ancient pictures of the Buddha, whether it was out of Tibet or whether it's from the Hindu tradition, oftentimes you will see a prayer of the hand, right? And oftentimes you will see it in front. But did you know that they would take the thumb and they would place it right here on the chest? Why? Because it was where the heart is. So take your hand and place it right there. And there's one thing that we know that energy goes and flows where our attention goes. So go to that and feel that place on your heart where that feels most important. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is just hold one hand and take your other and place it over your heart. Just take your hand and place it over your heart. And now I want you to just close your eyes for a minute. And I want you to take a deep breath, but I want you to breathe where your hand is over your heart. Breathe through your heart. Breathe in, new life. Take it to heart. Now let go of all that you want to let go that no longer serves. Breathe in, new life. Keep it heart-centered. Let go. And now here's another piece I want to ask you to consider. One of four things. As you keep your mind and focus there on your heart, breathe in, and I want you to feel either a place of gratitude, of love, of appreciation, or joy. Choose something that you're really grateful for or someone that you're grateful for. Someone that you really, something you really appreciate. Something that brings you great joy. Don't think about it. I want you to feel it in your heart as you continue to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in. 
Breathe out. Open yourself to newness of possibilities of new life. Be willing to let go and die to that which no longer serves. And it has been noted that if we do this just three minutes, just three minutes to hold that space with those kinds of feelings of joy, gratitude, love, that literally will have a chemical response in your body that will be sustained for over six hours. Another way that I feel that God is still speaking and in some ways, if some have said that through some of the sciences is a new avenue for us to have that mystical experience personally, to be able to identify that for ourselves. May we learn to trust and take all things to heart. To be able to live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let us continue to have eyes, ears, and hearts wide open to hear how God still is speaking so that we don't put a period where God may have only placed a comma. Amen? Amen. Amen.